Happy Sabbath to everyone. So glad that each and every one of you have decided to join us this morning for our, our Sabbath school lesson study. We've been having a wonderful time here in the book of Psalms where we have been studying for this quarter. We're just we're going to open up with a word of prayer uh, this morning. And um, if you have any comments, those who are watching online, you can type your comments or your questions in the chat. We, we will see them and respond uh, to them. So at this time, we can see we're going to have our opening prayer, and we're going to get right into our lesson today. We have a very exciting lesson that we're studying today. Um, so let's have a word of prayer before we, before we get started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that we've had to come together, Lord, to study your word. And as we study, Lord, help us gain a special blessing from on high this morning. We with individuals as they Tune in that they will be blessed, and those who are on the way, they may arrive here safely. This rest in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, doing this uh, lesson today, uh, lesson today, we're on lesson 12. This quarter is fastly uh, getting away from us, and I uh, hope that each and every one of you have received a blessing out of, of studying our lesson this quarter. Um. We, like I said, we have been studying the book of Psalms. It's been the book that we have been studying. So we're going to go over our memory verse today. Which says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. Another version of the Bible says, I will sing to the Lord for the rest of my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. I find this very interesting that, that um, the title of our lesson today is Worship That Never Ends. Worship That Never Ends. I will sing unto the Lord. Now, I was a little taken back by that I remember verse today because I don't consider myself a singer. Uh, I do sing, but David Thomas says, who would happen to be a musician, said, I will sing as long as I live. So let me put this in a modern day vernacular. Uh, David also said in the 34th vision of the Son, I will bless the Lord at all times in his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And so David, uh, with his harp, was a musician, and he loved to sing. Uh, many times, we d some, some people do not equate singing with worship. Let me say that again. Some people do not equate, equate worship with singing. Uh, because when you because when the morning hymn is sung in some of our churches, people are just looking and they're not really responding uh, to the song or participating in the hymn of the morning. And so, worship is not about uh, spectating. Worship is about participation. Worship is not about spectating, but worship is about participation. Our knowledge about God grows as we experience his mercy. As we grow as Christians, our hearts will fill with thanksgiving to God for his many blessings. Uh, David said in the 116th division of the Psalms, verse 12, what shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? What shall I render, render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? And in each and every one of us would acknowledge the fact that God has been good to each and every one of us. He has provided tremendous benefits to his people collectively and then individually. Just by the simple fact that you woke up this morning and God started you on your way says that that is a Benefit. It's not something you have to work for. Uh, you know, like I'm on. A, I have a job, and they offer me benefits 
But, but in order to, to get those benefits, I have to go to work every day in order to get those benefits, to get the health insurance and all the else that they provide for me. But David recognized that the blessings of God are just poured out to us, not that we have to do anything to earn the favor of God. God simply says, the word of God says it rains on the just as well as the unjust. So God allows his blessings to fall on everybody, no matter who they are, regardless of their particular status. And so David says, what shall I render? Or what shall I give to God for the benefits that he's shown towards me? In other words, David recognized that God had protected him when his life should have been snuffed out. David recognized that God provided food for him when he needed it. And so God was a constant and very present help in trouble, which is the 46th vision of the song. God is a very present help in trouble. The inevitable reply is to devote one's life to being faithful to God. One thing we can know about God is if we are faithful to God, God will be faithful to us. If we are faithful to God, God will be faithful uh, to us. In the psalm, Israel is not simply a nation, but a great assembly. This reveals Israel's primary calling to, the pray, to praise God and to wear, bear witness about him to other nations because the Lord wants all the world to join his people in worship. So this worship is not about us. It is about getting everybody or the whole world to join in in worshiping of God. Or whether we recognize it or not, the lessons today as well as the lessons that we have been studying during this quarter are end time lessons that are relevant to the day in which we live. Let me say that again. The lessons that we're studying today is relevant to the day in which we live. And the reason that the lesson today says worship that never ends is because what the, what the devil has been constantly trying to do throughout history is to separate man from his worship of God. Let me see that again. What devil, the devil has constantly done throughout history and will continue to do to the end of time is to separate man or separate us from our ability to worship God. So we all know the story of the three Hebrew boys in that Nebuchadnezzar built this great altar and he says, when you hear the music, everybody has to bow down. Um, but of course, they refused to bow down and were thrown into a burning fiery furnace. So out throughout the history, Satan has tried to separate man from the worship of the true God. And then Daniel, Daniel, Daniel was told the decree went out that everybody had to pray to the king for 30 days. Daniel did his usual thing, opened up his windows towards Jerusalem, and he prayed to God, which caused him to be thrown into the lion's den. It's because the adversary seeks to separate his people from the worship of God. Now, as we approach the end of time, as we approach the end of time, uh, all that live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. The adversary is going to seek to force people not to worship God. So it's very important that we understand that our worship to God has to be consistent. And so is God called Israel and what they were supposed to be to the surrounding nations is to demonstrate what true worship was all about. This is why God calls manna not to fall on the Sabbath day. So that everybody around would know that the seventh day was the Sabbath and it was supposed to provide time for the people of God to, to worship, to, to uh, proclaim worship to God. Now, we have some microphones in the aisle here. If someone wishes to make a comment, you're free to go to a microphone and make a comment. And those who are 
with uh, studying with us online, you can type it in the chat. I am monitoring the chat, and we will respond to your, your questions or your comments. So in the book of Psalms, Israel is not a nation, but a great assembly. This reveals Israel's primary calling to praise God and to bear witness about him to other nations because the Lord wants all the world to join his people in worship. So here it comes down to a responsibility of we as the people of God are supposed to proclaim to, to the world uh, that, that we are still supposed to worship God in spirit and, and in truth. In Revelation, uh, uh, John wrote, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. So our job is to proclaim to the world uh, that we are still obligated. That's not the word I use, obligated to worship the true God. Okay? And it says the Lord's people identified with the righteous who worship the Lord, whose hope is in, them, in him and his love. Praising the Lord in the congregation is perceived as ideal worship. Praising God, the Lord, in the congregation is perceived as ideal. This does not mean that the prayer and the praise of individuals in Israel assume a secondary meaning. By contrast, the individual worship of God feeds the communal worship with renewed praise. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later with renewed praise, because some people, some of us need to have a renewed praise with God. So uh, we don't need to keep praising about the miracle that God did for us alone. What has God done for you lately that you can praise him for, for and give thanks to him for? The worship community also is called the assembly of the upright, the Psalms 111, verse 1. The upright know God and are known by God. Okay, let me say that again. The upright know God and is known by God. Now, we know that uh, it was some individuals who were trying to cast out some demons out of a man. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and, the, and the devil said, Paul we know, Peter we know, but who are you? And so it is very important that we are known by God. We also know that in the last, that before, in judgment, that people will begin to tell God about all that they have done for him. Didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I visit the sick in your name? God going to say to them, depart from me, I do not know you. Okay? The upright know God, and we are known by God. And this permeates every aspect of this experience. So it's very important that we, as the people of God, are, uh, experience God, and so that God knows who we are. Good morning, Elder Baker. Glad to have Elder Baker. He's joining us this morning. He's going to assist us in our, our Sabbath school lesson this morning. Uh, so we're, we're moving forward over into Sunday's uh, <clears throat> lesson here. But I'm just finishing off in this part. So the people who meet together to worship God are named the people who are all right. And so this is how you can identify Who's God's pe who God's people are because they come together to worship God. Their experience with God fills every part of their lives. So th that means that worship is not just a, a Saturday morning activity. Worship is something that is a continuous activity that should permeate, permeate our lives all throughout the week. You ever wonder why people really cannot really enjoy the Sabbath and worship the way they want to here on Sabbath? Because they haven't been worshiping all week. Correct. So, so they have missed that, that blessing that they could have on the Sabbath. Uh, we're going to move right along to lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Now, I'm not really one for raising my hands up in the sanctuary. But, but if, if, uh, Ella Baker, if someone, you saw someone raising their hands up, out in the street, what would why why would they be raising their hand? They they are uh, they're excited about something. Are they excited they're about, something? about something? Okay. Suppose uh, there was an officer close by and they had their hands up in the air. What would you think is going on there? If, if an officer went by and they had their hands in the air, oh, they probably done something wrong. Okay. And he's saying, "Hey, hands in the air." Okay, which is a sign of surrender. 
sign of surrender. A sign of surrender, okay? And so, so lifting your hands in the sanctuary is saying, I'm surrendering my life to God. Uh, did you want to add anything else to that, Elder Baker? You, you know, you know, Elder Sankey, uh, in Psalms uh, 134, it reads, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth, bless thee out of Zion. Uh, you, you stated earlier that... Uh, we probably hadn't been worshiping all week. It's the reason we don't have anything to praise the Lord about. Uh, worship for the Christian should be a lifestyle. Yes. Yeah. Everything that we do and in everything that we experience, God should be centered and our focus should be drawn back to him or on him. And worship is a lifestyle for the Christian. We're, we're, we worship him in the morning at noontime, at night, we're just always in that spirit of worship. And, uh, and worship entitles our experiences each and every day. What are you experiencing? What are you going through? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure God has blessed you in some way. God has delivered you in some way. Mm -hmm. He has uh, protected you in some way. So there's just always a reason, Elder Sankey, to worship and praise and thank God and just, like you say, surrender. We surrender it all to God. Yeah, uh, and, and, and this is what it means. And of course, there's a, there's a hymn uh, that says what? I surrender. I surrender what? Most of it? All. All. And this all. is the key thing about surrender is it's surrendering all, all to God. <laughs> now, now, David said, um, in this hundred, what you just read, and I was look, I was looking at looking at what you read, mm -hmm. and then it, it tells us why we ought to praise God and acknowledge Him, mm -hmm. and that's the first three. Mm -hmm. What does first three says? Acknowledging God. Why the Lord made heaven and earth, bless thee out of Zion. Okay, so worship is about what acknowledging God as the our, Creator as our Creator. Yes, right. And so a lot of times what we have relegated the, the, the conversation down to as to a day of worship. Mm -hmm. It's not about a Saturday or Sunday or Monday or mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not what it's all about. It's about recognizing God as the creator. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, and this is what the, the essence of it all, is all about. Okay. Um, it says Psalms 134 recall, recalls the er erotic priestly blessing in Numbers 624 and highlights blessings as the underlying principle outcome of the relationship between God and Israel. The people bless God in the sanctuary and God blesses his people from Zion. The blessing extends to all of his life because the Lord is the creator of heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. The mention of Zion as the place of divine special blessing underlines the Lord's covenant bond with his people. It is thus within the covenant of grace that Israel exercises the privilege to bless the Lord and is blessed by him. So while people grumble sometimes about having to come to church, do you know it's a blessing to be able to come to church? It, it, it's definitely a blessing. And, you know, I hear people uh, criticize everything that's going on in the church. They don't like the way... Uh, the preacher priest. They don't like the way the choir sing. They don't uh, like the way the ushers usher. They don't like the way that we come into the house of the Lord on Sabbath and worship and we should be out in the community. We have so much uh, to be thankful for. And when you, to me, other singer, when you put it on, a, if you put it on a scale and you look at how much God has blessed us, uh, we, we can't help but just praise and thank God. And that, it's my prayer that we lose that critical and complaining spirit because Amen. it's not good for the people of God when it comes to worship. In fact, David said, I was glad. When, when he went into the house of the Lord. <laughs> house of the Lord. Yes. And, 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 and so you know what I found out something, Elder Baker? I found out something mm -hmm. about people. The people who have really been through something mm -hmm. and when they have seen the hand of God working. Yes. And God has brought them through 
some storms, mm -hmm. and he says, "Fine, it's shown than the rainbow." That's right. And they see the rainbow, which mm -hmm. acknowledges what God, mm -hmm. the promises of God, because the rainbow signified that I will never again destroy the world with a flood. So mm -hmm. when when they have come through a storm in their lives, mm -hmm. God has shown them a rainbow. That rainbow signifies to them that what you have been through. You don't have to do that. I'm not going, you're not going through that anymore. That's right. And, and it's a good thing that you're not going through that anymore. God doesn't just keep taking you through the mm -hmm. same. No, no. That's not the God that we serve. Abraham only had to take Isaac up to the mountain once. Mm -hmm. God didn't ask him to do that again. That's right. <laughs> so God only put trials on us, the same trial, once. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that's something to praise God for. for. Amen. And you know, Dr. Sanker, we just, we're, we're, we're still in COVID, but we just came out of terrible uh, uh, few years of COVID, and, yeah. we, and we lost a lot of people. Yeah, we sure but did. But we, yeah. we, we see the goodness of God in all of that because we can thank him that we're here. Right. We can thank him that we're here, and, uh, uh, and it has brought many of us closer to God. So God can use our worst experiences. Amen to be a blessing to us. And that is something to thank and praise God for. Right. And just, just to go through COVID, and uh, uh, I remember my, 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 my son, uh, my wife uh, got COVID when it first came out, and he was so afraid that he was gonna lose his mother. And, uh, and but God brought her through. He delivered Amen. her, and Amen. we praise and thank God, God for that. That's a reason to worship God, to come before his thrones with prayer and praise and, and, and just be thankful to be in his presence. Because we don't know uh, what we're going to go through, and we don't know what our neighbor is going through. So just to be in God's presence worshiping him is a blessing. Yeah. Um, you know, David, not David, Daniel, <laughs> Daniel had his worship. Three times a day. Mm -hmm. We know he had to worship for these, these three times a day. Uh, but you know, the 134th division of the Psalms that you just read, I was very taken back by the first verse that says, Bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Can you imagine? David was so into God and to worship that he mm -hmm. went at night. Yes. Now, I dare to say, when you call an all-night prayer meeting, <laughs> how many folks want to come and worship God at night? Not, not a lot. But, not a but lot. here's the thing, Elder Sankey. Those who love the Lord. Hello. Yeah. Those who want to be close to him and yeah. delight in the Lord. Right. And want to be here. Right. They're going to be here. Right. And, uh... And so that's what we have to be thankful for. Right. And, and, and we cannot um, uh, shut the church down or close the church because people don't want to drive uh, 10 miles to the church or people don't want to worship at 1 a.m. in the morning. Those who want to be here and need to be here, God is going to be here to bless them. Right. And that yeah. is a reason to worship and come and praise God. You know, Paul and Silas were in prison. Mm -hmm. What were they doing in prison at midnight? Singing and praying. <laughs> That's it. Those guys were having worship yes. at midnight. Yes. And while they were having worship, what happened? Tell them, Ella Baker, what happened? These guys worship and praise God. Now, I, personally, I, can I be honest? If, if I'm locked up <laughs> and, I, and I can't get into sleep, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm mad. I didn't do anything wrong. They got me locked up. The, the likelihood that I'm going to be singing and praising God is slim to none. That's right. But Paul and Silas, what were they doing? They, 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 were, they were singing and praying. Why? What, 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 what is there to sing about when you've been locked up, falsely accused, you haven't done anything, but you're in this dark dungeon of a prison, chained hands and feet? What is there to praise God while you worship? And then it's midnight when mm -hmm. you, normally all the other prisoners were asleep. Mm -hmm. You, you know, other thing, you say, why? Because in, in 1 uh, Thessalonians 5, uh, Paul tells us, in everything, give, give thanks. thanks. Amen. 
in everything give thanks. He don't say for everything, yeah. but he say in everything. So if you're in prison, praise and thank the Lord. Yeah. If you're in a, having a sickness, got a, got a heart problem or may have cancer, give praise and thank the Lord. If you uh, have lost your house, praise and thank the Lord. If your children is backslid or if you find yourself in a, in a bad situation, praise and thank the Lord. Paul encourages us in everything, give thanks. Right. And so even in that dark dungeon, <laughs> yeah. they was giving thanks. And what happened? God blessed them. He, How did he bless them? He, he, he freed them. He freed them. <laughs> he like. freed them. But you know, they were still there. Yeah. They, they didn't run away. No. They were still there. That's right. Because God, God had a greater blessing. God had a greater, what, God, was the, what was the greater blessing? He, he, he wanted others to see their faith Come on and their witness. Come on now. Yeah, and he wanted them. them to minister to others, to draw them to God. See, God says when he is lifted up, what's going to happen? I would draw all men to He me. would draw all men. So I believe men were changed that night. Yes, they were. Who was, one, was, was, who was, was the one person that, that was night. changed? Who was changed that night? Uh, was, the, was it one the, of the, the guards? The, the, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was changed and he took it. Paul, this house, and this whole house was saved simply because these men were worshiping when under most noble circumstances, it would not compel any of us to worship. Mm-hmm. Remember what I said earlier on, it's the devil wants to separate us to the yes. point that we do not want, make things so difficult in our lives. So we don't want to pray, we don't want to sing anymore because mm-hmm. things are going so bad. But what we found out from this story Yes. And that when we praise God, even in the midst of adversity, that God is able to do some great things. Able to do some great things. And you know, Elder Sankey, you know, I was uh, thinking this, uh, this week at work, got into a little bind, and I was like, oh, this is just, uh, things are just getting bad. But you know, uh, the, it, the Lord brought my attention back to the Sabbath school lesson, and he said, uh, just worship me. So I just put on some music, and <laughs> And uh, just start listening to it while I was working. And next thing I know, what I was worried about and thinking about, it just disappeared. Amen. Amen. That's how God wraps up. We have to keep moving along here. Okay. Down here in the lesson says, coming to him, coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God, precious. You also are living stones that are being built up in a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. Remember Paul said, you are a royal priesthood. Mm-hmm. To offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Because in the sanctuary is where sacrifice was made. And God says, uh, know you not that uh, you are, your body is the temple of God. Mm-hmm. Okay, We have been called to be living sacrifices. Now, as much as talks about singing to the Lord a new song. Now, my question is, what happened to the old song? What happened to the old songs? <laughs> yeah, why, 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 why are we encouraged to sing a new song? Why are we encouraged to do song? I, I, I think you touched on that in the beginning when you said uh, we have a worship. But uh, worship about our experiences every day. Amen. And, uh, uh, and my wife has a, 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 a picture in our dining room. It says, you can always find something to be thankful for. Amen. You can always find something. So uh, each and every day, Elder Sankey, when I wake up in the morning, that's a reason to be thankful. Yes. That's a reason to sing a new song. Yeah. Uh, when I hear about a friend who's uh, been delivered or a family member who's uh, been released from prison, that's a reason to be thankful. So God just gives us so many reasons to be thankful and to write a new song. Amen. And to write a new song. His the mercies are, are new everyone. every morning. And the goodness of God is that God always gives us something to sing about. Something to sing about. God says, I'm going to give you a new song. So mm-hmm. as God, as we, as we reflect upon the blessings of God, God puts within our heart a new song. That's right. Okay. And he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall what? Continually, Continually be in my mouth. As, uh, as a Sankey, I remember uh, growing up, I, uh, my, my grandmother, she, she didn't finish school. 
and uh, 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 she, she could write, breathe a little bit. But as she walked around the uh, old country home, she would just be moaning. And she, and, and she would just be moaning a, a, a new song. And that was her way of praying and worship and just being thankful, just be humming a new tone. So God gives us a way of writing that new song. Some may, people may journal it. Some people may write a song. And, and I thought about uh, one of Richard Smallwood's songs, and, uh, he, and uh, he gives this testimony before it, and he said one day one of his friends called him and said he was going through a problem. Yeah. Do you have a song? And, uh, and the Lord blessed him with... Uh, the song was just on my mind. Yeah, I, know I think about. it's Bomb and Gilead. Yeah. I believe that's it. Yeah, and he a wrote bomb. that yeah. song. Yeah. And that song has really been a blessing to thousands. many thousands, thousands of people, of people. Yeah. and has been encouragement to, to the world yeah. and to God's people. He, yeah, healing for my soul, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> healing for, yeah that's it. <laughs> healing, yeah. The same so, song so, by Richard So, so our, our God loves us so much. Yeah. He loves us so much, and he wants us to love him back, and yeah. he wants us to love one another. And he will give us that song mm -hmm. to not only encourage us, but to be a blessing to others. You know, uh, because we all know the song, Through It All. And mm -hmm. part of the song says, I thank him for the mountains, I thank him for the valley, I mm -hmm. thank him for the storms that he brought me through. Because yes. if yes. I never had a problem, I would no, not no. know. That God could solve that them. That he could solve them. Mm -hmm. I, would not, I, I would not know what faith in God, God. could do. Yes, and so yes. we have that. So God gives us something to thank him for. So even in the midst of our, I, I, I had a sermon one time called Uncounted Blessings. Uh -huh. the, the bad stuff that happened to us that we don't want to thank God for. Mm -hmm. But if God did not take us through something, we would not see the miracles mm -hmm. of the hand of God. Uh, it just just a couple weeks ago, I'm on my way to work, and for whatever I see this pot. Well, it was in, it was dark, uh -huh. but in the last second, I see this pothole. I swerve to okay. avoid the pothole, but the back tire hit the pothole. Oh my! Hit the <laughs> yeah, hit the pothole, and it it bent the rim on the on the car. <laughs> <laughs> Bad part wasn't even my car. Oh <laughs> man. <laughs> It wasn't your wife's car, was it? No. It oh, not. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, but, but even in the midst of that, let me tell you how good God is. I still drove the work on a mm -hmm. tire that was losing air, and I made it to work. And I'm thinking to myself as I'm going into the God, I said, well, oh, what, what am I going to do? And just as I'm thinking about it, someone pulled out of the parking space, and I just pulled my car right on in. Amen. I said, isn't God good? <laughs> and while I'm thinking about it, so while we worry about some of our problems, mm -hmm. God... Will, it's working to fix it for us. Amen. So we can praise God and worship him at all times. At all times. All time. At all times. Okay, time. Lord, the two who may abide in your tabernacle. Who, 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 who's eligible for worship? Who's, what, what, what makes us, this is what it's really talking about. Who's eligible for worship? And um, which is Psalms 15. Which, when David asked the question, who shall a Lord who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? And then verse 2 tells us what, who qualifies for true worship. And verse 2 says in Psalms 15, is he that what? Walks uprightly. Uprightly and what? Work of righteousness. And what else? Speak the truth in his heart. Speaking the truth in his heart. And so this gives us the qualifications for who can abide. The answer is given in the Psalms of the qualifications. Mm -hmm. Now, now the, the next question comes to our mind, well, well how, how can I walk upright? How can I walk upright when, when my trials and my pains of life have beaten me down? How is it possible to walk upright? Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm carrying such a heavy burden on my shoulder and you expect me to go worship, mm -hmm. when I'm carrying this heavy burden on my shoulder, you're telling me to walk upright. How is that possible, Elder Baker, to walk upright when I'm carrying this heavy burden on my shoulder? 
Oh, man, anybody want to help us out there? How do we walk upright when we're carrying that heavy burden on our shoulder? How do we walk upright? How do we walk upright? Well, oh, I have, we have someone, Sister Beverly. Yes, Mm. Amen. 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 And that's recognizing that you're not carrying the burden by yourself. So here worship is acknowledging and worshiping God. It's what it's all about. And, 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 and so a lot of times we come into church and say, Lord, we invite you. We don't have to invite God's already, God's God's already, already here. here. He, he came before he got here before you got here. <laughs> Amen. All we do is to acknowledge his presence. And mm -hmm. I like what Sister Beverly said in that. And in that, we acknowledge that we are not, yes, I can walk up right because mm -hmm. I have help. That's right. I have somebody to help me. And, 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 and so when I had the flat tire, uh, I was going to call Trip and said, Hold the spirit. No, I just got to inject the cop and take the towel. Uh -huh. <laughs> the towel. Went to the dealership. They gave me a new rim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> gave me a new hubcap. Oh, man. <laughs> Isn't that a blessing? Got the tire replaced for, for free because <laughs> yes. it was under warranty. Uh -huh. <laughs> so God is good. So even in the midst of all that, you still can praise God. And, and I know, Elder Saint, I, I, I know you, uh, you, you probably got a sermon from that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sure did. Sure did. Sake, you probably got a sermon from that. And, yeah. and you thank and praise God. God knew that was going to happen. Yeah. And uh, he knew how to put the providers around you to make sure that your car would get fixed in a yeah. timely manner. Yes, and it sure and that, and that's how, that's how good God is to yeah. his people. Yeah. That he never leaves us, nor what, forsakes what us. us. No. And uh, he gives us... so. He allow a little bit of trouble to come to us, but he knows how to balance that trouble Amen. to keep us faithful and keep us close to him and, and, and for, for us to grow in our faith mm -hmm. and to appreciate the goodness of God each and every day of our lives. So, which was a thought just hit my mind based on what the comment that was made. Folks, if we can just claim the promises of God. Mm-hmm. That, that is what really makes worship easy. That's right. When we are claiming those promises of God, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So mm -hmm. in spite of the fact you're carrying a heavy burden, and David said, who shall abide? He that walk up rightly and work with righteousness and speak the truth in his heart. First of all, we got to be talking right. Mm -hmm. We got to speak the truth. And this qualifies. And he that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor take it up a reproach against his neighbor. You know how we like to, you know, we carry a grudge. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and what he says, don't come, you do not, you're not qualified as a worshiper when you're carrying a grudge against your neighbor. This is what, this is what he's saying. In whose eyes a bow person is condemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that swear to his own hurt and changeth not. He that putteth not his own money to user, nor take a reward against the innocent. And so God said, well, you're not trying to take advantage of the people. Mm -hmm. and this qualifies you for to be a worshiper uh, in the house of God's holy hill. So as I was saying, that uh, I wrote down in my lesson, God wants us to be kind to one another. He wants us to love one another and to be uh, honest with one another, yeah. to be men and women, boys and girls of integrity. Yeah. And uh, uh, that prepares us to worship in the house of God with a clean heart, a pure heart, not uh, with motives that are unacceptable to God. Okay. okay. I see we got a happy Sabbath from our head elder, Elder Emmanuel Charles. He says, happy Sabbath family. Cordell Dixon says, happy Sabbath family of God. Welcome everyone to Sabbath school and be blessed. Super, superintendents asked the question, Sister Ms. C.L. Lewis, is there more to worship than on the Sabbath? Yes, there's more to worshiping than this on the Sabbath because our worship throughout the week prepares mm -hmm. us for worship on Sabbath. Amen. S see, a lot of people know, think they just go automatically when we get to heaven, they're going to they're gonna be transformed. You know, the Bible said we shall be changed in a moment in a twinkle of that. Mm -hmm. The Bible's not going to change you in, into a worshiper 
uh, before Jesus comes. Before Jesus comes, we must already have had a worship experience with Jesus. Amen. I'm gonna say that again. Before Jesus comes, we have already have have to have already had and learned how and had a relationship with God through worship. Amen. Okay. And so he isn't going to show up and all of a sudden you're all of a sudden going to decide I'm going to become a worshiper, worshiper and I'm going to start talking right and treating people right. It's too late then. Now is the time when we are to develop that experience and that worship experience with God. Okay. Uh, down here it says a blameless life springs from the acknowledgement of God's grace and his righteousness. A blameless life springs from the acknowledgement of God's grace and his righteousness under Tuesday's lesson. Divine grace inspires and enables God's servants to live in the fear of the Lord, which means to live in unhindered fellowship with God in a submission to his word. And so who may abide in this tabernacle? I know I want to abide in the tabernacle of the Lord. And so David lays out that there are certain qualifications that we must have uh, in order to worship God and then to worship God in spirit and in truth. Okay, let's go move right along here. Uh, to declare his glory among the nations. Now, um, we have been called for a special work, the, the Adventist Church. What is the mission of the Adventist Church? What's, what's our mission, Elder Baker? What's, what's our mission? What is our mission? Our, our, our mission is to go forward, sharing the three angels' message, t telling people about the soon coming, uh, our Lord and Savior, and it is to share the gospel yeah. with, with, with everyone, not just locally, but uh, throughout the world. Yeah. And, and, and we are a mission-driven church, and yeah. that, is, that is our mission. Mm -hmm. The 96 Division of the Psalms, you have your Bible, you can turn there. 96 Division of the Psalms, which, which deals with declaring his glory among the nations, where David says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. There's that phrase again, sing unto the Lord all the earth. Now, um, you know, we, as, far, as far as music in the, in the church, I'm just going to touch this a little bit, it, it, it's, it's transitioning a little bit. So mm -hmm. the senior citizens who've been around a long time, they have their songs they lay like to sing. <laughs> Amen, seniors? They, like, they want to sing, great is thy faithfulness. Mm -hmm. That means so much to them, great is thy faithfulness. Mm -hmm. But then the young folks come along, they don't sing, great is thy faithfulness. They sing, how great is our God. How great is our God. I got you. I got you. That's the new song of the day. <laughs> How great is our God. Mm -hmm. But they're still singing the same song because mm -hmm. each of the songs are speaking about the greatness of God. So I'm saying that let's not get hung up on the young folk because they want to sing songs that sound a little bit different than what we used to. Listen to the words. You could be blessed by it. And then in verse 2, it says, Sing unto the Lord, bless his name, show, show forth his salvation. How often? From how often? From day to day. That's right. So, so that means every day. Show forth the praises of God every day. But see, what we have learned to do, uh, it, and it's kind of our fault because we know we had this, this little song that we learned in mm -hmm. Sabbath school. If you're happy, you didn't know it, say amen. But what about when you're not happy? Can you say mm -hmm. amen when you're not happy? If you're happy, you didn't know it, clap your feet. I'm not downplaying the psalm. But mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make the point that we want to clap our feet, say amen, when things are going well. What David is saying is when things aren't going so well, clap your hands, stomp your feet, clap your hands, raise your hands up in the air. I will bless him at all times. His praise shall continually mm -hmm. be in my mouth. Do not let what's going on around you disturb the praise and the worship that goes on on the inside. Amen. Because amen. that's where worship happens is on the inside. Do you know there's some such thing as fake worshipers? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. where people appear to be worshiping God, and, mm -hmm. and then they're not really, there's not no true worship going on on the inside. And so David wants us and admonishes us to worship God from day to day. He says in verse 3, 
Here comes the message of what we're supposed to do. What does verse 3 say in 96 verse 3? Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. Why? Verse 4 says why? For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Okay, amen. Amen. Elder Sankey, God is calling us to be a witness. All of us to be a witness. He's calling us. And the beautiful thing about music and singing that new song, music can be played almost anywhere. Yes. And when through that music we are lifting up and glorifying God, it draws people uh, to God. And it causes them to almost pause and stop wherever they are and and, and start thinking about the goodness of God and, and how God, our creator, is working in their lives and, in, and, and all around them. And, and, and it's, it's amazing. You could uh, be, be in a, with a group of people and you put on a, a, a gospel song and things just settle down and stop. And people start changing their behavior and their thoughts, because I believe God is ministering through them, through that song, through that new song, through that experience at that time. Yeah. And it's interesting that um, when we come out of worship, how many of us, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, <laughs> mm-hmm. how many of us go out and tell someone about the worship experience that we had at our church on Sabbath? Do we go out and brag on that? Boy, you should have heard the sermon that I heard on Sabbath. You should have heard the song that I heard on Sabbath. Our choir really did sing this song called, Our Preacher Preached About the Grace of God this Sabbath. And we begin to share how what worship did for us. As I think I have a quick experience. I uh, used to work the night shift uh, managing a restaurant. And uh, I would come in after the Sabbath, and but the day manager, uh, he would work the morning, the, the midday shift. But you know, he would wait for me. He would wait for me till I got there because he always wanted to know what the preacher preached about. Amen. Amen. And 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 we would spend 10, 15 minutes uh, just talking That's about. Talking about. Yeah. He wanted to know what the preacher preached about. Uh, I would just, I say that to say this, you never know how God is moving and how you're witnessing in someone's life. Today, he's a pastor. Amen. And I believe uh, God used me to be a part of that. Amen. And, but he would always, uh, he would wait. What did the pastor preach about today? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Br- wonderful testimony. And this is what we are all about. Declare his glory among the heathen his wonders among all people. His wonders among all people. Now, here, here it comes down to, it didn't say just declare his wonders among the people that I like. Mm-hmm. The, people in my, the, the people that are my same race. The, the, I declare his glory among people that are in my economic status. Mm-hmm. That is not what the verse says. The, the verse is saying, regardless of who the person is, that his wonders and to testify and declare the goodness of God to all people. Amen. That's what we have been called to do, to declare his glory among all people. Okay? So worship includes singing to the Lord, praising his name, proclaim his goodness and greatness, and bringing gifts to his temple. In addition to these familiar traits of worship, Psalms 96 highlight not so obvious aspects of worship, evangelical dementia, and proclaiming the Lord's kingdom to other people. So while we're worshiping, I I hope we understand 
Mm -hmm. uh, that is not for us to uh, take in all of this worship to ourselves. That's right. We are supposed to share the, the gospel and the worship with us. In fact, the problem with us, we have become so spiritually fat and so spiritually constipated mm -hmm. because we don't, we don't share the word of God the way that we, that, that we should. See, what we have to understand as we, as we share the word of God with other people. That's right. Let me tell you what God does. He pours more of his spirit within you. Amen. As you give away some, remember when Jesus had to feed the 5,000? Mm -hmm. as, as he breaks bread and the disciples go out, when they come back, there was more bread to give out. And so as we give and share the good news of God and how we have been blessed through God, then he is able to bless us that much more. Okay? So we're going to move right along to when does God not delight in sacrifices? When does God not delight? Now, now this is, this is kind of interesting because everybody who came to the temple was supposed to bring a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But here, this part of this, it talks about when is God not happy or, or he not, <laughs> does not want sacrifice? When does God not happy with our sacrifice? S Psalms 40. Elder Sankey, yeah. um, he, he's not happy when our heart is not right. Amen. All right. He's not happy when um, I come to church and I sing and I preach and I read the scripture, but um, I treat my wife bad and I treat my children bad. I'm uh, a not a good co-worker to the people that I work with at, at, uh, at, at, at work. Uh, I don't help my neighbor. Uh, I was late for Sabbath school this morning um, because my neighbor's dog had got out. And there was people in the neighborhood <clears throat> walking and delivering things, and they were afraid. So I, and, I, and I thought about it, I said, oh, I'm supposed to be at Sabbath school in an hour. Do I let this dog just keep wandering through the neighborhood or do I go and get my neighbor to come, come help secure his dog? I went and got him to help secure his dog. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> I was able to call you and let you know I was going to be late. <laughs> but uh, people look at that. Yeah. And wh what, what do your lifestyle, what do your actions say about you? Yeah. Not just in words, but how do you treat others around you? Uh, amen. Go, go to the microphone, Keith. Yeah, because the, the, the fact that the Bible says if you got all against your neighbor, you go fix it with the neighbor. Don't even come in here talking about worship, mm -hmm. and you not get along with folks out there. Yes, brother. Good morning, Sabbath school. Right. I was um, reading and studying the Sabbath school lesson, and I was reading, and it was talking about, uh, it said, when does God not delight in sacrifices? When we do lip service. Yes. Our heart is not right well, he said, they worship me with their lips, but they don't worship me. Right. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, you know, <laughs> help me not to be like that, you know, because we can, we can do it and don't even recognize that we're doing it. Amen. That's right. So it is possible to have lip service, but not have heart service. Mm -hmm. uh, when when um, Cain brought the sacrifice in his heart, he felt he was sincere, like, this is my best that I have, and God mm -hmm. ought to be able to take this because mm -hmm. this, is, this is what I produce. And, Lord, you should accept my sacrifice, you know. And when God doesn't accept the sacrifice, he's upset. Correct. Okay? But we have to understand that there are requirements for worship to God. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we come to church, and you ever hear people leave church, I ain't getting nothing out of church today. Well, I wonder why. <laughs> Is it, is, it, is, it, is it something wrong with the service or is there something wrong with you and your relationship mm -hmm. with God? It's like, that preacher didn't say nothing today. Well, yes, he did say something. <laughs> but were you listening? Did you, you were listening to the preacher, but you were not listening to the voice of God. This is what we have to listen. Worship is not about who's up here. It's about God. Yes, it's not about, yes. so don't, don't get caught yes. up in the choir singing and sound good. No, no, no. Worship, again, is about God. Amen. Okay, what the preacher preaches is about God. He's going to read a scripture. 
You read that scripture and say, God, what do you want me to get out of it? Worship is God trying to talk to you. Amen. But and we other, listen to the man. Yeah. Other, other thing, and you're absolutely right. And uh, uh, in Psalms 51, verse uh, 17, it reads, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh, God, thou will not despise. You know, I enjoy the singing. I enjoy the, the scripture reading and the praising. But worship also is about uh, forgiveness. It is about uh, repenting. When we come to worship, are we praying and asking God to forgive us for our sins? Are we, re like you say, receiving the message from God and repenting from our evil and wicked ways yeah. so that God can use us and clean us up? Or do we come to church and still keep sinning when we leave? Yeah. When we come to church... Do we not turn and repent from the evil and wickedness in our lives? Yes. And so God isn't angry with his people for their gifts or burnt offerings. What God does not like is fake worship. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because there is always what we have to remember. Like, I'm going to go back to what my first statement was. Mm -hmm. The lessons that we're studying are end time lessons. At the end of time, the issue will be about what, Ella Baker? Worship. Worship. Mm -hmm. The whole issue of end time is about who are we going to worship. Mm -hmm. So let's don't don't go don't don't get it. And 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 the interesting thing about that is that the spirit of prophecy says that in the end time, true worship was so mimic false worship. Mm -hmm. that you would not be able to tell Correct. the difference. Correct. Except by the study of the Word of God. Amen. And so, so if you really want to know how to worship, mm -hmm. take some time and read through the book of Psalms. This is what we've been studying our whole Amen. quarter. These, these verses are encouragement for us. Mm -hmm. They tell us the expectation of God. It also tell, talk, tells us about a God who is our refuge and strength mm -hmm. and a very present help yeah. in trouble. Yeah. Amen. So while we're concerned about the burdens of life that we must carry on our back, that we think would inhibit us from praising God and worshiping us, mm -hmm. as the comment was made, we recognize who God is mm -hmm. and that he is there to support us. And not only that, as we acknowledge God, God acknowledges us. Amen. And this is what it's all about. Amen. And another thing, David uh, wrote pretty much a lot of the Psalms. And we could hear David's prayers because David wanted to live a life of obedience. He wanted to live a life where he didn't have to worry about the sins he had committed. So David confessed well, well, his sins. Oh, David wasn't perfect. David was not perfect. He wrote the whole. We, all, he wrote this whole book. Yeah, David was not perfect. Neither are we perfect. But but uh, Jesus is perfect. Yeah, man. And Jesus wants to cover us with His righteousness. So we have to confess our sins, repent, and be obedient, so that uh, uh, we can be acceptable and blameless in the sight of God. Amen. Because David, he, he recognized his situation. Mm -hmm. He says, hey, create within me a clean the first heart. To be a, a create clean heart and renew what? The, mm -hmm. Not any old spirit, but the right spirit Amen. within me. Because all of us got some spirit. Come on now, folks. Let somebody get you upset. You got some spirit in you. Uh -huh. But what he's trying to say to us is that we must have the right spirit. Him that worship God must worship him in spirit with the right spirit and in truth, okay? So we, this is what God expect, expects out of us. Offerings and gifts are not enough. What good of our gifts is the heart that gives them isn't sorry for sin or filled with faith? So God's not going to be impressed. You can put all the money up here you want. 
Uh, that doesn't, all your financial giving doesn't impress God. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean what God is looking for is what? People who are willing to confess their sins and feel sorry for their sins and looking for him to cover them by the blood of the lamb. Interesting here, we're standing by the communion table. That's right. This communion ta table is a reminder of what, Ella Baker? What does it remind us of? What, Ella Baker, what does the communion table remind us of? His sacrifice, what Amen. Christ has done for us. What Christ has done for us, and that we are, our sins are covered mm -hmm. by the blood of Jesus. You have any final comments? Yes, I would just like to, this text all week was, and it's one of my favorite uh, passages of scriptures, is 1 Thessalonians uh, uh, 5, verse 16 through 18. It says, rejoice evermore. The Christian should be excited and delighted about worshiping the Lord. Then the Christian should pray without ceasing. Yeah. The worshiper prays without ceasing. And then the worshiper, in everything, give thanks. Amen. In everything, Amen. not for everything, but in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So the worshiper of the Sankey, should be rejoiceful, uh, should pray without ceasing, and give thanks in everything. Amen. I just want to say one thing. The Sabbath school lesson goes along with the communion. I was, as I was reading the Sabbath school lesson the other night and last night, and then I came here this morning, and I thought about that. I'm like, wow, this lesson, especially toward the end of the lesson, it's a heart check thing. And it goes right along with this communion service. Amen. Amen. You know, give us our closing prayer, Ella Baker. Thank yeah, you all I, for, for, ab participa absolutely. for participating in our Sabbath school this morning. Thank you very much for those who are online. And God bless you. Hope you have a special, blessed Sabbath day. Go ahead, Ella Baker. Amen. And thank everyone for coming. Let's bow our heads. Eternal God, we're so grateful for your loving kindness, your mercy, and grace. We thank you, dear Lord, for bringing us to the house of worship this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray, Lord, that the experience that we have today will draw us closer to you. Our sins will be forgiven. Our repentance will take place in our lives. Lord, we pray that someone who come to worship today will accept you as their personal savior. We thank you, Lord, for each and every family that came to Sabbath school. Help us, Lord, to study each and every day of the week that we will become knowledgeable and be able to apply your instructions to our everyday lives. Help us, Father, to keep a song in our heart, to praise and thank you in everything. And, Lord, help us, each and every one of us to love one another and to love you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. Have a happy Sabbath. Adventist Young Professionals has quickly grown from an Instagram page into a global grassroots movement. So today, I wanted to take a minute to explain who we are and how we serve. 
At AYP, we are a hub that connects, engages, and equips young professionals locally and around the world by providing personal, spiritual, and professional resources regardless of one's walk of life. We strive to inspire disciple makers for Christ. Our team of young professionals lead our three ministry elements, AYP ambassadors, AYP groups, and AYP profiles. Across North America, AYP ambassadors serve young professionals by cultivating authentic friendships through local grassroots gatherings. Each AYP ambassador connects a couple dozen young professionals from various churches in a town or a city. Together, they grow friendships, build relationships, and engage with local churches and ministries. AYP groups multiply these efforts by equipping young professionals with virtual peer-led groups that engages young adults from various cities or regions over a shared goal or interest. AYP Profiles advances professional development and adds a cross-generational element by connecting young adults with a seasoned professional who can mentor them as they pursue their career as a Seventh-day Adventist young professional. Beyond North America, we are expanding with chapters led by innovative young professionals who are passionate about Jesus. Teams in Australia and Liberia are leading the path for a globally connected generation of Adventists engaged and equipped to be Jesus to the world. Are you ready to get involved? Whether you want to join an AYP group, make new local friends, or become an ambassador, our team is excited to connect, engage, and equip you with other Adventist Young Professionals. To learn more, visit AdventistYoungProfessionals.org. The 
but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother or my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Oh, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his course of praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endure to all generations. We set our work aside we leave our cares behind on this day of Sabbath rest. On this your holy day, we come to give you praise on this day of 
Father, we thank you for your wonderful mercy and blessings that you have shown to each and every one of us. But allow us once again to enter into this temple on this your holy Sabbath day. We acknowledge your presence here with us, Lord. And so, Lord, as we go through this service today, help that everyone within our gates and those who are viewing online may receive a special blessing from on high. And when we have left this place, Lord, help us to be able to say, Lord, it was good that we were here. These are all of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, Mount Sinai. Oh, it's a better morning than that. Good morning, Mount Sinai. We praise the living God from whom all blessings flow, that we are here living, moving, and having our beings this morning. We welcome all those who are viewing us online. We thank you so very much for choosing Mount Sinai as your place of worship today. We just want to welcome all those who are here. We praise the Lord for our members who are here live, those online. Are there any first-time visitors today? You've never been in Mount Sinai before. This is your first time being in our midst. Is there anyone like that today? We just want you to stand briefly so we can give you our Mount Sinai welcome. Praise the living God from whom all blessings flow. Amen, amen, hallelujah. We appreciate you being in our midst so very much. God bless you as you experience God in our midst today. We have several things to share with you. First of all, uh, our second win worship service on Wednesday night is going on. Amen, amen, amen. We've been having a good time. We've been getting you out on time. Y'all still ain't with me. We want to remind those of you who are coming and are interested in prayer meeting. It should be all of us, but the reality is it's just some of us. Second win on Wednesday. Right now it's beginning at 6 o'clock. We're just trying to talk about some things to adjust time. Amen? But we're having a wonderful time worshiping, preaching, singing, and glorifying God. We have taken our prayer portion out of Wednesday night and we've moved it to Tuesday night. Amen? You have a pen. You, let me give you the number that you need to call. Amen? It, let me know when you're ready. The number is 712-770-770. 4816 and the passcode is 265 I'll go, I'll go over it again 537 pound it's, I, 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 I know I know sister, sis, sister Jenkins I just want to make sure that it's announced from the desk it's in your program, I'm sure, but it might be just the font might be too small. So, once again, 712-770-4816. The passcode is 265-537-POUND or hash, whichever you prefer. Amen? 
I want to remind you, there's a six o'clock program focusing on mental health today. You need to be there. Amen. We are having communion. Amen. Boy, you sound like. And then we have church in conference at 730. I know. It's a long day. I get it. I'm in it. And so we together have to hold each other up till we get through. We have some very important things at the church and conference, including an announcement that I need to give you personally. Amen? So we need all of our members at church and conference this evening. Amen? Are you ready to worship? Then Jesus says, praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The mental health awareness is at 4 o'clock instead of 6 o'clock. It's 6 o'clock in your program, but it's at 4. Amen? Amen. Amen again. God bless you. forward as they play the wonderful music for you. and girls. Oh, you don't sound lively enough. Good morning, boys and girls. That sounds so much better. So our theme for this month has been God empowers us to be faithful. So this is for Sabbath. That means we've been talking about being faithful for a while. So can anyone tell me what it means to be faithful? Oh, wow, Miss Tess, I think we're going to have to do some tests and some quizzes for the children. Oh, I see one hand, one hand, one hand. To trust in God. To trust in God. What a really good answer. I was going to say the same thing. Oh, he agreed with him to trust in God. So, boys and girls, I want you to know <clears throat> that being faithful for God means a couple of things. It means God is consistent. Can everybody say consistent? God is reliable. He's worthy of our trust. And you can count on him. That means whatever God has promised to do, he's going to do it. So we've learned many stories in Sabbath school as Summit Kids about people in the Bible who were faithful. Like Moses. Anyone know what Moses did, he went and he obeyed God and he said, you know what, God, I think I'm going to tell Pharaoh that those people are going to have to be let go. And there's this big, gigantic Red Sea. Did they swim across the Red Sea? How did they get across there? 
What happened? The water split. He trusted that God would be faithful to split the water. Daniel was praying and he got in trouble because they made a decree that you couldn't pray to God anymore. You could only pray to the king. Did Daniel close his windows and pray in private? No, he opened his windows wide and he said, that's what I've been doing. That's what I'm going to keep doing. And I believe that God is faithful. And what did they do to Daniel? Killed him. No, they didn't kill him. What did they do to Daniel? Put him in the lion's den. They put him in a lion's den. Was Daniel afraid that he was going to die in the lion's den and be killed? No, he wasn't. Why? Because he knew God was faithful and that God would protect him. So I know you may think that those stories were so long ago. So how can you trust that God will be faithful to you? Well, I have my little scientist bag with me here. And we're going to do a little experiment. My helper, Langston, is going to assist me. Come on, scientist Langston. Does anybody know what this is? A tiger. It's a stuffed animal. So, Langston, I want you to put the stuffed animal up as high as you can, and then I want you to drop it. Okay. Langston, drop the stuffed animal. Did the stuffed animal stay in the air? Okay, this time I want you to turn around two times, and then I want you to hold it high in the air and drop it. Oh, so Langston changed his position and his method, but did the stuffed animal still fall to the ground? Hmm, maybe we'll try with a ball. This is a ball. I want you to move it from your right hand to your left hand. Back, back again. And now I want you to drop it and see if it stays in the air. Oh, it didn't stay in the air. Maybe... Maybe the stuffed animal and the ball just don't work. So here, this is, what is this? A Q-tip. All right, maybe we need a Q-tip, something that's shaped different. I want you to twirl the Q-tip around. And then I want you to see if you can make it in the air. Drop it. Hmm, that didn't work either. What else do I have in here? I just don't know why this isn't working for us. Huh, I have an eraser. How about it's shaped different? I want you to put the eraser up in the air, and then I want you to drop it. It still didn't stay in the air. Does anybody know why it didn't stay in the air? Gravity. Gravity. All right. We have some big kids in our bunch here. So no matter what we did, to the items. Langston, can you pick the items up and put them back in our sciences bag? Gravity was dependable, right? Gravity did its job. Gravity's job is to pull it down. If I ask you to jump up, are you going to stay in the air? If Langston were to take that stuffed animal and say, I'm going to make it stick to the wall all by itself, is it going to do that? No, because of gravity. So gravity is kind of like God. Gravity is dependable that no matter what you do with that object, it's going to come back and be pulled down to the ground. So no matter what you think God can't handle, God is faithful and dependable to handle it. It doesn't matter if it happens to you today, tomorrow, at school, at home, with your friends, with your parents. God is just like gravity. He is dependable and he is faithful to handle whatever comes your way. So whenever you get discouraged or you think that God cannot empower you to be faithful or you think the situation is bad, thank you so much, scientist Langston. He gets a little carried away. Sit down. No matter what your situation, I want you to think of gravity. So if you bounce a ball, it's going to come back down. It's not going to stay there because gravity is dependable just like God is dependable and faithful. Our verse today is Deuteronomy 7 verse 9. God is indeed God. He is faithful God who keeps his covenant 
for a thousand generations. That means forever God is going to be faithful and he's going to keep his promises. He lavishes unfailing love on those who love him and obey his commandments. So when you need a little bit more power and you want to be more faithful or you doubt that God can really help you in that situation, I want you to think of gravity. Before we go, boys and girls, I want to remind you of our canned food drive. So we have Children's Church in a couple of weeks. We are expecting you, and we want to remind you parents as well, because we know your children cannot go to the store and shop and buy the canned goods that we need. We would like you to bring us lots of canned goods for our canned good drive, because we want to be faithful to God and do his will and be able to help others in our community. And Miss Des is going to go ahead and pass out your bags. We want you to stand to your feet. The hymn of the morning is Power in the Blood, number 294 in your hymnal. We want you to get connected to the power source this morning. Amen? Amen.
may be seated.
of the tea and that we can drink the tea. But that's not what I want to talk about today. I want to tell you that if you imagine this microphone as a cup and we put the tea bag in the cup and the tea begins to steep, but then you put honey in the cup. And when you have honey and tea and water, you have unity in the cup. Am I right? When you have the cup, you no longer see the honey. When you have the cup, you no longer see the grains that's in the bag. What you see is unity. You see one cup that blesses whoever partakes of the tea. Now, when you came in this morning, if you didn't come in fast, and just run by you got a little sticker that said we are one we are what we are one say it with me we are one more time you didn't get one oh you got one all right if you didn't get one we have some more we have plenty because we want to understand that the power that we have is because we are what one. we are one we're not honey over here and grain over there and water over there we are one, one. when we come to this table today when we finish the table we are what one now there's one great element that keeps us one and that's prayer because when we pray together we become come on we become one when we pray together it's prayer time here at the mount and we want to pray together because we want as one to let our prayers ascend to God our Father. Because of our communion table, we're not going to ask you to come down, but our praise team is going to lead us in our prayer time. We're going to ask you to just stand in place if today you want to be one with us in prayer Ella Pates is going to come and lead us in prayer. We are what? One. We are one. Your brokenness is Let us bow our heads in prayer. Loving Father, as we come before you this morning, we are reminded of the last prayer that Jesus, our Savior, prayed for his disciples and for all that they would bring to you. In that prayer, he said, Father, I pray that all of them may be one, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. As we come before you today, Lord, we come in the knowledge that you have placed us here as your witnesses. We come before you giving you thanks and praise for the privilege to worship together today when so many did not make it from last Sabbath to this one. 
We come before you, Lord, giving you thanks and praise for your grace and mercy, which covers all of our sinfulness and our weaknesses. We come before you, Lord, in expectancy that today as we worship with you, our lives might be transformed. Lord, as we come, we come lifting up those who are sick among us. Father, you know who they are. We have many on our sick list today. And we ask, Lord, that you, the master physician, will go and visit with each one. That you will touch them, Lord. Give them your peace. Help them to know that they can be still and know that you are God because you promised to reveal yourself to each and every one of us. We want to pray in a special way right now for the Harris family who are at the doctor right now with their daughter who is sick. Lord, we lift her up to you because we know that you are able to do it with much more than we can even ask or think. We ask, Lord, that you will comfort the Harrises. Give them peace, Lord. Give them a conviction that you have everything and their daughter included safely in your hands. We pray, Lord, that you will heal her according to your will. We also want to lift up Chris, who is still fighting for his life in ICU. We pray, Lord, that you will visit him today, that you will be with his medical team and give them the knowledge they need to bring this young man to health and strength to a place where he can give you the honor and the glory and be a testimony of your might, your goodness and grace. We pray, Lord, for Sister Mabel Johnson, Conrad and Sheena's mom, who is in hospital for many months, Lord, as they seek to help her heal from a terrible auto accident that left her with a shattered pelvis. We ask, Lord, that you will visit her, that you'll visit them, encourage them, Lord, and help them to have all the resources they need to be able to help their mom in her recovery. And Lord, we just want to thank you for what you're doing for all who are sick today and bring their petitions to you. You know each and every one better than I do. And I pray, Lord, that you'll be to them what they need from you in this time. Father, we lift up those who are bereaved. There are so many. The list so sadly is endless. And we just ask you, Lord, to wrap your loving arms around each and every family who is grieving the loss today of a child, of a life partner, of a, a grandmother, a, a cousin, a niece, any family member, Lord, a parent. We ask that you will dry their tears. Give them, Lord, a vision of that day when you will roll the clouds away and roll the stones away and they will be reunited once again with their loved ones. I want to mention a, a special request that I received to pray for Johnny Rivers' brother who has just lost his fiance. We thank you, Lord, for your promise that you will wipe away all tears from our eyes. Help us to look forward to that day. And today, finally, we want to invite and invoke your presence in this celebration of communion. Celebration of that last supper as Jesus our Savior prepared to lay down his life, to shed his blood, to have his body broken for our sins. He was sinless, but he died that we might live. And today as we celebrate, Lord, we, I pray that you will just baptize in you, our pastor will bring the message today, that you'll fill him with your Holy Spirit, that you'll anoint his head, you'll anoint his mind, you will anoint his heart, Lord, that you'll speak to him and speak through him, if necessary, speak for him. But may all of us today leave this place transformed as we leave to be your witnesses by our unity and our love. We are one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to do so was to give our personal testimony, one that happened a few years ago but had a profound impact on our life of God's goodness and his grace and his mercy towards us. Amen? Amen. A few years ago, while we were living in New York, it was in the month of February on a Friday morning and a freezing holiday weekend. During that month, so many things were happening one after another that was not within our budget. As a result, I said to my husband, um, before we do anything else, double check to make sure that we had enough oil in the tank to heat the house. So he assured me that we had enough to last for the next two weeks and that he will be ordering all in the next few days. That was the Thursday. Not until that Friday morning, he decided he was gonna double check to make sure that everything was okay for that weekend. When he did check, he realized that on the tank, the level on the tank shows that the oil was on zero. So he came to me and he said, babe, we are in trouble. I said, what do you mean? He said, there is no oil in the tank. I said, but the heat is on. He said, you don't understand. He said, any minute now that there's a possibility that if the boiler shut down, that the house can freeze and the pipe can freeze and bust and we are going to be in trouble. So he said, um, we have to call the company, the oil company right away. 
So he said, but before we do that, let us pray. And I recall saying, Lord, you're a God of the impossible. You make a way where there is no way. You sit high and you reach low and attend to our every need. And Father, with faith, because you said faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I said, Father, I may not see the evidence right now, but I know it's on its way and I'm claiming it in the name of Jesus to your divine power. And as he prayed, and then he called the company. When he called the company, the first thing he heard, he said, it's impossible. I said in my mind, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And then he says, we are backed up. He says, um, if you are looking for delivery today, it's impossible. He said, we have customers who have ordered since three days ago, and they will not be able to get any um, delivery until Wednesday or Thursday. He said, furthermore, he says, um, if you call up any other company, they will tell you the same thing. So he said, what do you want to do? My husband says, um, I will go by faith. I will order the oil. So when he did give him our account number and he put it into the system, he said, wait a minute. I see that you are a valued customer and you have been with us for a while, you know? He said, I will try to squeeze you in instead of Thursday, squeeze you in for Monday. Mm. Then as he continued with the transaction, he said, hold on one minute. He said, um, I see that the last time that you ordered oil, you ordered more than what you had needed. And we have a credit for you for $225. <laughs> And he said, to God be the glory. And as we said, but my husband said, but then can I put something on it and you can deliver it today? He said, no, not today. He said, um, because you are a valid customer, that's why we are giving it to you on Monday. He said, but what I can do, I can put you at the top. In case someone cancel, we can, you are priority. You would be the first one to call. Then we said thank you. To God be the glory. After we hung up, we were just praising God and giving him the praise, the honor, and the glory that is due to your name. And we said, God, but we did not, um, we still do not have the oil to heat the house. I said, but God, I'm going by faith and I'm trusting in you. And then, um, it dawned on us, wait a minute, during all this transaction, the heat is still going. The boiler did not shut down. And we, the oil is still at zero. And that went on until Sabbath evening. And we started praising God and giving him the glory. We said, God, we are not going to ask you for anything. But we're going to just praise you and give you the honor and the glory that is due to your name. And then... Through the whole night until Sabbath morning, the heat was still going. And we said, Lord, we're going to get dressed and go to church and just praise your name even more. We went to church during procession. We went up and we said, God, we come here. We're not going to ask you for anything, but we're going to praise you and we're going to give you the glory, the honor for what you are doing and what you will be doing. And then... Um, when we um, came home after church, we opened the house. I looked at my husband, he looked at me. I said, God, you are something else. The house was so hot, more than ever before. And this went on until Sunday, still on zero. And not until Monday morning, they came and delivered the oil and the heat never cut off. And the boiler never shut down. I said to God, be the glory, great things he has done. God can do the impossible, make the, possible, the impossible possible. 
He sits high and he reach low and attend to all every need. I said, Father, you make a way where there is no way. Father, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I said, God may not see the evidence, but I know that your evidence is all, always on the way. So I want to say to you, have faith. Give with a willing heart. And God can do miraculous things in your life more than you can even dream of. Give with a willing heart. Your tithes and your offering. Amen. Amen. You always trust in God that he never leave nor forsake his children and lean on, always lean on his promises. He also uh, promised that in Malachi chapter 3, 10, he stated, Bring all the tithes in the storehouse, they bid me meet in my house, improve me now. Here within, he said, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will be enough, enough room to receive it. Those who are online and those who are here, we are Mount Sinai. We have many different ways to give back our tithes and offering to the Lord. Could mail it in at 2600 or in Center Boulevard, all around Florida, 32805. Three, you could also drop it off here. Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays between 10 and 3. Also, online giving, Mount Sinai, SDA, Orlando.org, online giving. And also, who are, here, who are here worshiping after service would be a deacon at the end of service, collect the tithes and orphan. With that said, may the deacon please stand for prayer. Oh, Father and our God, we praise you, dear Lord, for who you are, a God whose love, gracious and mercy, God who is abundant in goodness and in truth. Father, we ask you to please bless this tithes and offering and bless it for it to go to the further of your cause. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
believe that today. Lose all their guilt, their stains. What a mighty God we serve. Amen, amen, amen. I want to keep in mind on next Sabbath. Next Sabbath we have youth explosion in the morning. Amen. And Pastor Emmanuel Charles will be the speaker in the morning. But then at 5 o'clock, what time did I say? 5 o'clock, we are going to have the seven last words of Christ. Uh, you don't hear me. It's going to be an awesome experience. You have your four resident pastors involved. And then we have three guest pastors that are going to come and we are going to preach each of us for 10 minutes. Somebody laughing. You don't think it can be done. You don't think we can discipline ourselves to preach 10 minutes and sit down. You don't think that can happen? I had a mentor whose name was Dr. Lawrence Shepard. He would always say, you know, you have to operate according to the three B's. Be quick, be powerful, and be seated. And beloved, we plan by the grace of God to do just that. Amen. It's going to be a blessing. We're going to have with us our executive secretary of the Southeastern Conference, Pierre, Pierre Francois, who's a powerful preacher. And of course, we will have Chelton Lee, who's coming to us from the Winter Garden Seventh Day Adventist Church. Amen. Uh, he's, he's, going, he's going to bring home the bacon. It's going to be good. Well, I shouldn't say bacon, I should say the strippers. And then we're going to have our neighboring pastor who's being installed this morning, Pastor Travante Peterson from the Washington Shores Church of Christ. He is going to come and share with us in that wonderful endeavor. It's going to be beautiful. You need to be here. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. I wonder if you would read the scripture with me. As we stand together, I'd like to look at two scriptures, one being Colossians 2 and verse 9, the other Galatians 2 and verse 20. One being Colossians 2 and verse 9, the other is Galatians 2 and verse 20. Once again, I'd say we would like to look at Colossians 2 and verse 9, and then Galatians 2 and verse 20. And reading in your hearing, Colossians 2 9 says in the King James Version, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And Galatians 2 and verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. I want you to pray with me as we meditate upon the subject. What more can I do? What more? can I do? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your love and your mercy, your presence and your power. We would ask in the name of Jesus that you would speak to your servant today, Lord. Help me to carry out your will as you have outlined it. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart 
be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and our Redeemer. And all of God's people said, Amen and amen again. You may be seated in the house of the living God. What more can I do? What more can I do? Our beloved Jesus is speaking. I was born in Bethlehem. I was brought up in Nazareth. I was baptized by John in the Jordan River. What more can I do? I was anointed for ministry to the world by the Holy Ghost. I healed the sick. I raised the dead. What more can I do? I cast out demons. I was betrayed by one who I both called and ordained. I was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. I was beaten in Pilate's Hall. What more can I do? I was disrespected in Caiaphas's court. I was swapped out for Barabbas by my own people. I carried my own cross as far as I could. I was hanged at Calvary. What more can I do? I was broken at Calvary. I was bled at Calvary. I died at Calvary. I rose early Sunday morning. What more can I do? I stayed to encourage the disciples for 40 days. I ascended to prepare you a place in heaven. My preparation for you has now been completed. I intercede with the Father on your behalf. What more can I do? And with all that I am, I live in you by your invitation. For the Bible says, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And Paul goes on to say, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me with all the fullness of the Godhead Bodily, God says, I even put the Spirit of God in you. For John 14, 17 says, even the Spirit of truth, whom the, the world can, cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. What more can I do? While all these things have been completed and prepared, we should be ready for translation to heaven. The angels are poised to come. The whole heaven has prepared itself for the grand and glorious occasion. Even the guardian angels who are assigned to mark the spots of the dead righteous perhaps are looking skyward in wonderment because the world's condition is worse than in the days of Noah, worse than the days of Sodom, worse than the days of Gomorrah. Now you may be wondering about this guardian angel. I need to read you something from my life today, a devotional, that basically says this. Every redeemed one, will understand the ministry of angels in his own or 
in her own life. I wish you listened to me. The angel who was their guardian from their earliest moment. The angel who watched their steps and covered their head in the day of peril. The angel who was with them in the valley of the shadow of death. The angel that marked his or her resting place, who was the first to greet them in the resurrection morning, what would it be to hold converse with that angel? Y'all ain't hearing me today. See, God has assigned an angel from the very moment you said, why? There was an angel assigned to you for your life. And when you raise up at the last day, the first person that will greet you is that guardian angel who will say, welcome back. Come on, let me escort you on up to the meeting in the sky. However, saints, with all that has been done, with all that Jesus has done, something is impeding the process. Something is impinging upon the plan. Something is infringing upon the divine intentions. And if we would allow the prophet Isaiah to speak, he will shed the same light on the subject that he shed centuries ago. You remember the text, Isaiah 1, 18 through 20. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured of the sword for the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. Beloved, isn't it ironic? That the words refuse and rebel both begin with the letter R in the English language and in the Hebrew language, those words both begin with the letter M. Crazy. In the Hebrew language, they are ma'in and marah. Ma'in and marah. Ma'ain and Marah. Ma'ain means utter refusal, which means that you don't just turn your back to God, you turn your back to God with attitude. That's Ma'ain. Marah means that you're contentious, you're argumentative, you're controversial with God. God says up, we say down. God says in, we say out. God says left, we say right. God says round, we say square. God says marriage, we say common law. God says marriage, we say friends with benefits. God says marriage should be, should be had by one man and one woman. We say marriage should be had 
by one man and another man, or one woman and another woman, or multiple mates. That's what my uh, morale means. You're contentious. You're argumentative, and you're you're, you're controversial. With God, we learned a long time ago that our arms are too short to box with God. But here, God says to Isaiah, there's, there's two types of people that are holding us up. And they're holding us up because I love them and believe they can still change. Oh, my goodness. Acts of the Apostles, 333, paragraph 3. In the contemplation of Christ, we linger on the shore of a love that is measureless. Are you hearing me? Jesus is still waiting and interceding for people who don't give a about him. And he always has. For the Bible says in Romans, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hold on. Original language puts it in the present tense. While we were yet sinning. Come on, help me now. While you were in the middle of the puff. While you were under the sheets. While you were pulling triggers on the street. While you were lying through your teeth. While we didn't give a about the Lord. He paid the price on Calvary's tree for each of us, hoping and praying that someday they're going to choose me over themselves. But saints of God, I got news for you. That love is going to run out one of these days. It's going to run out. This sermon, what more can I do? Is a sermon that's called a question propounded. See, Dr. Benjamin Reeves, who we're going to funeralize next month, was my teacher at Oakwood University in homiletics, which is sermon construction. He taught us out of a book that was written by a scholar whose name was H. Grady Davis. The book was entitled Design for Preaching. And the book talks about the organic method of preaching, where it says just like a a, a seed germinates in the soil and it sprouts a tap root and, and the rest of those roots and uh, forms a, a, a tree trunk and, and grows and, and flourishes and spreads its branches and then gets its leaves and then gets its fruit. It's the same way a sermon should germinate from a single 
idea. And out of that form were five methods of preaching. A subject discussed. A thesis supported. A message illumined. A question propounded and a story told. Um, Dr. Rees was a master in using an entire sermon with one story. A master. But this would be considered a question propounded. What more can I do? And the cardinal rule for a question propounded sermon is that the sermon should not answer the question. The sermon should be answered by those who hear the sermon. But I'm going to break the rule. And I'm going to simply say, what more can you do, Jesus? Absolutely nothing. There's nothing else the Lord needs to do. It only rests upon us to live the song that says nothing between my soul and the Savior. Not of this world's elusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing between. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. So that his blessed face may be seen. Nothing preventing the least of his favor. Keep the way clear. There's nothing between. Nothing Jesus needs to do. It's all on us to live right. Claim Jesus as our own. Because, beloved, we have all the power to resist the devil because we have Jesus in us who has the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Y'all ain't hearing me. We got the Holy Spirit assigned in us the only way we can do wrong then is choose to. I heard Joshua say, choose you this day whom you shall serve. Whether it's the fathers with your with you, with, with the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, come on, man. You got to speak for your family. Come on now. They have an individual choice to make, but you can speak as the priest of your household. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. What more can I do? Says Jesus. Nothing, Lord. It's all up to us. Just before we get into our communion, just before the choir sings that song, there may be somebody here today who needs to say nothing between. I don't want anything between me and the Savior. 
I want to show that by coming down, giving the pastor your hand, and giving God your heart. Is there anybody like that today? I can't hold it long. I can hold on, only hold it a couple minutes. But if you love God like you're supposed to love him, if we love God like he loves us, I can sing this song. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But I'm saying Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. I can stand on that. He's the best thing that has ever happened to me. Is he the best thing that ever happened to you? You should stand on that. If he's the best thing that ever happened to you, then stand on that. Lord God is here. Lord God hears. And Lord, we are declaring in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, my brother. Come on. We're going to sit you right here. Just for a moment. Got you, man. Anyone else? Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Gail, one stanza, one stanza, one stanza. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. Not of this world's delusive dream I have renounced all sinful pleasure Jesus is mine there's nothing Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you for everything that you've done on our behalf. Lord, we stand because we must. We must stand because you've been faithful to us. Now, God, we ask that you take us that step further take us to the next level in our relationship with you so that we can live what we sing, nothing between. And Lord, if you bless us, we'll be careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus. Let everyone say amen. Let everyone say hallelujah. Let everyone say praise the Lord. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. We're just going to find out what this young man wants to do. Is it Isol? Isaac? Got you. Joe Escalante. Am I good? All right, all right. He's nine years old. He um, lives with his... This is your grandson, Brother Cruz. Praise the Lord. Amen. He's taking a stand for baptism. Praise the Lord, man. We're going to have a good time. We're looking forward to it. We thank these wonderful ladies for coming down and getting your information. Um, we're going to contact, get in contact with you after church. We're going to talk to you. Is that the granddad? Amen. And we're going to get you ready for that wonderful occasion. Is that all right? God bless you, man.
look, take a look back here and see all those wonderful people. Amen. Amen. Bible says the little child shall lead them. So God bless you, my brother. God keep you. Is our prayer. Uh, the choir is going. Is it the praise team or choir sing?
just before we begin this service, we're asking for anyone who has any items between the pews on the floor to move those items under the pews so as not to impede the progress of the deacons as they go through the aisles. The second announcement is the children receive a praise pack, and in that praise pack, you have wafers and grapes for those kids to take part in the service today. So parents, help them along. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Amen. My heart gets excited when we get to this part of our communion. Amen. At this particular time, Elder Maynard Julian is going to read the scriptures for the emblems, and Elder Neville Bennett will be doing the prayers over those same emblems. As it is written in the book of 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 26, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and, sh and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let us pray. Oh, Father in heaven, and we pause again, dear Lord, to thank you for your goodness, for your mercies. We thank you for this time that we can spend again to participate of this communion service which pointed towards your body, towards the blood that was shed for us. We pray this morning that you will bless it, dear Father, so that as we partake, we remember your death on Calvary's cross. Help us, cleanse us, keep us safe. Keep us faithful as we partake this day, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen.
Has anyone been omitted? And Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. This is the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it.
Amen. Boy, God is always good to us. We, we never know how everything's going to turn out, but something happens when the Lord arrives. He comes and just sets things in order, and the Lord God is good. Amen. And so, so beloved, I would just like to say to you, thank you so very much for praying for us. Nothing happens in this church without your prayers. Amen. And so I just want to thank you so very much for keeping us in prayer. I looked at our program. We, we want to keep those individuals who are on our sick list in our prayers today. Uh, we want to keep everybody on our roll in our prayers. Uh, you never know what tomorrow may hold. And so today, and as much as we've had a great time in God, we're just going to ask you to continue to keep on praying. All right. Auntie Ellen says in The Desire of Ages, page 83, that we ought to take some time, at least an hour a day, admiring the Savior and what he has done. And I'm encouraging our church today to do that. Because once you take time to admire him, to look at him, to understand the sacrifice that he has made, you can never remain the same. Because he will transform you when you have accepted him. So I'm asking you, church, pray for us. Look towards Jesus the author and finisher of all faith. Amen, Pastor. I can hardly wait until next Sabbath. I said I can hardly wait until next Sabbath. Our Sabbaths have been good, 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 getting gooder, gooder, gooder. But I'm studying for the seven last words and it's really really good I mean it's really really good I just want to tell you one thing can I tell you one thing Satan was not interested in Jesus dying he wanted to beat him up to make him come down off that cross because if he had come down off that cross down off that cross we wouldn't be here today Satan would have been the victor but he stayed on that cross and we can praise him today because he stayed on that cross Amen, amen, uh, uh, great word, great word, yeah, that's a, pr that's a prelude to next week, five o'clock, we're going to focus on the cross, it's going to be great. <laughs> Pastor Emmanuel said it was 90 seconds, so we off to a good start, <laughs> praise the Lord. We want to stand at this time for our benedictory praise. Our praise team will lead us, and then we will have our closing prayer. Praise God for you.
us all day. We just want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you've given us that even us spend time in your house today. And so now, Lord, as we're leaving this house, we ask that your presence and your Holy Spirit will remain with us throughout the rest of the week because, Lord, we love you and we say this. seated for a moment of meditation. We're going to exit through the middle road, go out to the vestibule. We'll see you when the ushers let you out at this time. We're going to ask our deaconess and our deacons to stand once again. Praise the living God from whom all blessings flow. Okay, and we should, we have a, 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 an individual in the back. One of our deacons in the back has, has the bucket for the benevolent fund. Please give liberally to that. Okay, four o'clock, the mental health awareness presentation. And 7.30 is our church and conference. We need all of our members to be there. God bless you. We love you. God keep you is our prayer.